Hi, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are coding our Clash Royale light game. And in the last video, we added the defeat and the victory room, right? We now can have a nice game ending. I think I've turned back my attack damage to one. No, my players still have a hundred attack damage. So yeah, you can see that I defeated them with a single blow and I went to the victory room. If I press space, I can play the game again. Right, I will go to my unit here and just make my attack damage uh, to be one again. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be adding new units to our game. So the first thing I want to add is a new card, a new unit, a new player that we can summon if we click on the card, right? So first I will need two images. I will need a new image for the card and a new image for the unit. And we have those two sprites here on the asset store if we look for the spider. So let me go here, next, next, next. Uh, we have the ghost there. Where is the spider? There you go. So we have the spider and the spider card and we need both. So first I will get the spider. I will select asset and my ghost, I called ghost. So my spider, I'm gonna call spider. And I'm gonna add a new sprite again. I'll select the sprite the spider card, select asset, and this will be my spider card. And press OK. So the first thing, I want to create a new card together with this one here, right? Beside this one. So I create that card on our room play. It was on the game before, right? But now we have it on the room play. And here on the room play, we have the ghost card being created. It has a sprite and its position in this position and it has this cost. Okay, so I'll do basically the same for my uh, spider card. So this is the ghost card that is a card. And then I have now my spider card. Uh, let me zoom in again. So my spider card also is a card and my spider card has a sprite that is different than the ghost card, is a new sprite from the image spider card dot PNG, right? So you can see that when I press play, we can already see the spider card being created right in the middle of the screen. So I'm gonna bring it down. So I can say here that the spider card dot x is going to be so if the x for my ghost card is minus 550 the x for my spider card is going to be minus uh, let's try minus 500 just to see if it works or not and the y should be the same i want them to be in the same y position so my uh sp spider cards dot y is going to be so minus 280 so let's see where it goes. Oh, so I have to bring it a little bit to the right. So I will increase this number. So instead of minus 500, it's gonna be minus, let's try minus 400. Uh, it's quite better, but I think there's too much space there. So I'll try minus 450. Nope, minus 420. Yeah, that's quite better. So now I have my card here, but as you can see, whenever I click on the card, it says that this card has no mana cost, right? Card object has no attribute mana cost in pointer loop. So it's trying to get the mana cost of this card, but I have not specified the mana cost as I did for the ghost card, right? So the spider card will have a mana cost that is, so the mana cost for the ghost card is two. For the spider card, I'll say three. So now let's try again, press play. And whenever I click on my spider card, if I have three mana, of course, it creates a ghost card. So now the problem is because inside my pointer in the loop tab, I only check if I have clicked on a card. And then later I checked if this card's mana is greater uh, if my game mana is greater than this card's mana cost, right? And if so, then I create a Gaspar Ghost unit. But now there's a difference because we have two cards now, right? And we have to differentiate them. So 
on my game, uh, I mean on the playroom, I will say, I will create a new variable for these cards and I will say that the ghost card, ghost card dot number is equals one. So the ghost card will have a number and this number is one. For the spider card, the spider card will also have a number, but this number is gonna be two. So the number one is referent to the ghost card and the number two is referent to the spider card. Okay, so now pointer loop tab, inside the pointer in the loop tab, we check here if we have pressed the left button, we check if the pointer is colliding with a card, we get the card that the pointer is colliding with, we check if our mana is greater than the mana cost of that card, and now, before I spawn the ghost unit, I will only spawn the unit if my card, right, I get which card I have touched it, so if this card dot number is equals equals one, that means that I have a ghost, right? So then I have to, then I want to run all this code. So I have to indent this to be inside that if, right? If the card number is one, I summon the ghost and then I change the sprite and then I give it a position and then I take mana from it, right? Okay, after this, I wanna check again if, this card number is equals equals two now. So here you can see that if the card number is one, I run all this code because they are all indented inside this if, right? If it's not one, then it will just skip all this code and then it will come to this if here and check if the card number is then two. If the card number is two, I want to create a unit that is not a Gasper ghost. I want to create my spider. So I'll call my spider Benny. So Benny spider is a unit to create my spider. And the Benny spider, so now I'm just following the steps I did for the Gasper ghost. So the second step is to add a sprite. So the Benny spider dot sprite is a new sprite from the class, uh, from the image. What is the name of the image? Spider.png. And then my Benny Spider.x will also be the player base position because I want my Benny Spider to be created in the same position as my player base, right? So the Benny Spider X is going to be my game.playerbase.x and the Benny Spider.y is gonna be the same as my game.playerbase.y. Okay, so now we have the following code that says that the game mana is gonna be the game mana minus the mana cost, right? So this is to take mana according to the mana cost of this card, and I would also need this code here. So I would also need game.mana equals game dot mana minus card dot mana cost. But you can see that all these four lines here are different than all these four lines here, right? That's why we are doing them twice. Even though they look the same, they have a different name, right? This is the Gaspar Ghost and this is the Benny Spider. But for this line here, they are the same line, right? So here you can see that I on, on, on the two lines, I say game.mana equals game.mana minus card.mana cost. So I don't wanna keep repeating this line every time I get a new card number. What I can do is I can remove this line from here and from here as well, but instead of removing, I will copy this line from here. So control C and I will remove it from here and then I will paste it before I check for the card number, but after I check if I have mana enough to, to spawn that unit, right? So here in between these two lines, I will paste it there. So whenever I have mana, so let's go from the beginning. Have I pressed the left button of the mouse? If so, check if my mouse or this pointer 
is colliding with a card. If so, get the card that I'm colliding with and check if my game mana is greater than this card's mana cost. If it is, then reduce my mana according to this card's mana cost and then check if this card's number is 1, then spawn the Gasper Ghost. If the card's number is 2, spawn the Bandy Spider. So now, when I press play, you can see that when I have 2, 3, I can spawn my spider. And when I have 2, I can spawn my ghost. So I can spawn the 2 units right now, right? But there's something that I want to change. Because right now, my spider has the same attributes as my ghost. Because all its attributes are going to be, are, are being defined inside the unit class. So inside the unit class, you can see that it has the speed 2, and attack damage 1, and the max life 100, and the life that starts with the maximum life that is 100 as well, right? So it's saying that all my units have a speed 2, and attack damage 1, and a max life 100. But what if I want it different for my spider? So we can change it. It's pretty simple. I'll go to my playroom here. No, I'll go to my pointer on the loop tab. Whenever I spawn my Benny Spider, if I want to change these uh, units attributes, I can just say here that my Benny Spider has a different speed, for example. So I'll change the speed, like I'm changing the X and Y, right? I can also change the speed. So the speed of the spider is going to be 1, it's not going to be 2. So that's for me, okay? You can choose the own, your own values. So my Benny Spider speed is going to be 1. My Benny Spider dot attack damage is going to be... So the regular attack damage for my unit is 1. So this spider will have more attack damage. So this will have 3 attack damage. And I will also change how much life this Benny Spider has. So the Benny Spider dot life is gonna be, so 100 is the regular life, this is gonna have 120. It'll have a little bit more life than the regular units. But if you remember, we have the max life uh, variable here, right? And this is important to control the HP bar scale, right? So we also have to change the maximum life. So back there on the pointer in the loop tab, if I change my life, I also have to change the maximum life. Benny Spider dot max life is also going to be 120, right? It has to be the same value. So if I don't want to change my, my life, I can just not include this code here. Or if I don't want to change my attack damage, I want it to be the same as the other one. I just don't have to include this line here. So I will just include the lines that I want to change. So I want to change my speed, I want to change my attack damage, and I want to change my life. So I have to include those two lines, this line and this line. And now my spider is a completely new unit with its own attributes. So you can see that the ghost behaves in one way and the spider behaves very similarly, but it has different attributes, right? And in this way now, we can include as many cards as we want in our game, right? We just have to go to the playroom, create a new card, like we do with the goose card and the spider card. And then we go on the pointer and then we check if the card number is one, I spawn the ghost unit. If the card number is two, I spawn the Benny spider. And then if the card number is three, I spawn another thing, right? That's all we have to do now. And the next step I wanna do now is to add a new enemy for our game as well, like we do uh, with the bat here. I want to also have a new enemy. So I'm going to stop my game. I'm going to go to my sprites and I'm going to look for a new sprite to be my other enemy. And I know which sprite I want. I want to get a blue slime that we have back here, I guess. It should be on B from blue. There you go. Blue slime. So this is going to be my second enemy. I will select that and I'll call it slime. It doesn't need a card, right? Because that's the enemy unit. And I just have to go on the play. And for the enemies, it's basically the same thing as we do for the bat. So if I have a timer to control when the bat is going to be spawned, I will also have a timer to control when the slime is going to be spawned. So game.slime timer 
is gonna be. So my Slimer, I want to take a little bit longer to spawn. So I'm, I'm gonna say 120 to spawn the first unit. And then in the loop tab, as I keep reducing the bat timer, I will also have to keep reducing the slime timer. So game.slime timer is gonna be game.slime timer minus one. So I keep reducing the slime timer, right? And here I check if the game bat timer is less or equal than zero, so I can spawn a bat unit and reset the bat timer to start counting again, right? And I'm gonna do something very similar for my slime timer. So what I wanna do is I will, I will copy this code here, control C, and after these lines, I will paste it down here. So I have two codes that are the same, but I will change whatever I have to change. So game.bat timer, so no, this one's gonna be the slime timer, right? And it's not gonna be a bat enemy, it's gonna be a slime enemy. And it is also an enemy unit, that's fine. So here my slime enemy will have a sprite that is a new sprite from the image slime.png. My slime enemy X will be the same as my enemy base X and my slime enemy Y will be the same as my enemy base Y so it can be created on the same position as my enemy base. And the last thing is that my slime timer is gonna be a random uniform. So a random number between 60 and 300. But this was from the bad timer. I want my slime to take longer. So I'm gonna say uh, from two seconds to 10 seconds. So it is gonna take usually longer to spawn a new uh, slime for us. But now, we have the problem that the slime is also uh, has also the same attributes as the bat, right? It just looks different, but they are basically the same because we are using the same attributes for them. So like we did with the player's units, we can also do with the slime. So I can see, I can say here, before I change the slime timer, I can say here that the slime enemy will have a different uh, speed. So the speed of the slime enemy it's going to be 0 0.5, this is going to be very slow. And I don't want to change the attack damage, that can be 1, so I'll just skip that. And I want to change the life. So the slime uh, enemy dot life is going to be, so 100 is the regular, I want this slime to, to hold more damage. So this is going to be 200 life. And as I change the life, I also have to change the maximum life, so slime enemy dot max life is gonna be 200 as well. So now my slime enemy is also a brand new unit that also behaves like an enemy, but it has different attributes, right? And that's great. We have two more units in our game and we know how to add more and more units if we need, right? We just have to add a new timer for the enemy and add a new card for the player. So now it's easy to scale our game. If we want to have 10 cards or 20 different enemies, we can do it easily, right? We know how to do it. So now I'll just press save my game to save my progress. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.